Howdy folks, John here. Welcome to part 9 of the R2-D2 build series. In today's video, we're finally going to get started on body and parts painting. We'll also look at the rear Omni wheels, cover a few other tips, build the power cables, and start getting R2 back together. Before getting to all that stuff, however, today marks another big milestone in this project. The last of the parts just finished printing. Break out the champagne, folks. It's finished. The last of the leg parts, got the shoulder, toggles, the hydraulics, and the buttons. How far we have come since the very first print of the dome sections almost six months ago. And I have been printing pretty much consistently, you know. Wake up in the morning, make sure it's printing. Before you go to bed at night, make sure it's printing. If I had to guess, easily log 2,500 hours. So, how much filament have we gone through? <laughs> yeah, 31 rolls of filament. I was surprised by that too. I was kind of budgeting 20 rolls, going by the instructions and what I was reading online. But, uh, you know, mileage will vary. It depends on your infill density and your wall thickness on all my structural parts. I did go pretty high on both. And then, of course, how many failed prints or screw-ups you have. So if I had to guess, probably two rolls I was in waste. But not much waste at all, considering. Back to my favorite thing, painting. Not Now, I'm not going to go into huge detail because I'm following the exact same process I used when I painted the dome. We've got two coats of sandable primer on here. First coat I sanded basically right down to the bare plastic so the primer could fill in all the little scratches and whatnot. Second coat, sanded it lighter with a thousand grit. Some plastic showing through. I'm not as worried though with the body as I was with the dome because we're using a um, white semi-gloss so it's not going to show imperfections nearly as bad, at least I hope. And again, this is the Rust-Oleum 2X. Just the semi-gloss white. Nothing exciting about it. And I always screw up painting. I put it on too thick, so light coats. Three hours later. Three coats later, used one entire can for the body and it came out really good. As I expected with this uh, semi-gloss white, the underlayer doesn't have to be quite as perfect. Obviously, you still want it good, but uh, two coats of that sandable primer was fine. No runs, I can't believe it. <laughs> For those of you who have been watching this R2 build series, you know by now I'm a pretty big fan of Rub and Buff, and I've just got some final tips on it. I think I finally got it nailed down. These are the shoulder flanges, one on the right, one on the left, between the body and the legs. This upper one I have Rub and Buffed, the lower one is just uh, aluminum paint. And I really like this polished aluminum look. If you like the polished aluminum look like this, I'm going to show you how I achieve it. So again. Silver paint first, it could be even gray primer. And the trick is to sand this with a thousand grit even higher. The smoother you can get this, the more of a mirrored finish the rub and buff is gonna give you. All we're doing is we're taking out all the little, the bumply surface, the pebbly surface, whatever you wanna call it, just to make this aluminum paint nice and smooth. So here's the flange now, sanded down. If you go through the Paint into the primer, no big deal, as long as it's not too deep. Like I said, you could even use just a gray primer. So if the rub and buff was to rub off, you'd still have a gray or silver looking uh, base underneath the rub and buff. Now you don't have to do this either. What I found that seems to help allow the rub and buff to spread better is if you heat the object up with a hairdryer. So yeah, you just want it warm. And this just allows the rub and buff to go on a little bit easier and more consistent. Again, with this stuff, you don't need much. But when it's warm like that, it really spreads and goes on nice and consistent. And once you go all the way around, then to polish it, I use just a piece of leather. 
I used to use my finger, but this seems to do a much better job. And you really put a lot of pressure on it. And that's what gives you that polished aluminum look. I just love it. So from that to that. Little tip I thought I'd share that uh, you may or may not want to try. If you've got access to a sand blaster or a bead blaster, you may want to try to finish all the tinier parts with uh, bead blasting. It works quite well at uh, getting rid of all the layer lines in hard to access areas. And after priming, layer lines pretty much disappear completely. And then here's the final paint. And as you can see, it leaves kind of a textured bumpy surface. Keep in mind the blue shows this up really bad, but a lot easier than sanding all these little fine detail parts a lot quicker too. The silver is actually very smooth looking. So just something that you may want to try if you have access to a bead blaster. You may or may not like the results. I find in all these little hard to access areas like these little cooling fins, it works really well. For those of you who watched the last video where R2 was somewhat driving around, you know I tried to use a uh, roller blade wheel for the Mark III feet. Figured this was more robust than an Omni wheel, but there was just way too much scrub as we saw. So we have to use an Omni wheel. Ordered some up, they just arrived. These are the Vex Pro 4775, three and a quarter inch Omnis. They are super robust. I was a little bit worried that they wouldn't be as strong as a roller blade wheel, but now that I see them in person, uh, now they're built like a brick shithouse. The rollers are a little bit soft. They're not quite as soft as the roller blade wheel, but they are softer, but I know they're gonna be noisier. There's just no way around it, but the advantage with Omnis is they can roll sideways as well as roll forwards and backwards so you get full range of motion we won't get any more wheel scrub but there's one little problem with these and they are designed to be driven with a hex shaft I want them bearing now in the Mr. Badley files for the Mark III feet their solution is to use a printed hex shaft no big deal there but then you have to get special hexed flange bearings for the foot casing and I didn't want to go to that expense I'm a tight ass and I've got tons of these 608 bearings I'd like to use. So all I did was grind out this little hex shaft and ribbing on each side of the wheel, printed a little spacer so I could fit a standard 608 bearing in there, and now I can just fit a normal eight millimeter shaft through, and uh, we don't have to worry about getting flanged hex bearings, just standard 608 bearings you can get anywhere. Quickest way I know to make nice chamfered ends on the end of shafts. Focus. Now to see if it actually fits. So, spacer, omni wheel, another spacer, other flange. <sighs> Holy smokes. Gotta love it when a plan comes together. Boy, there's not much clearance between that lower rib and the wheel, but it obviously works. Just a couple of obvious gotchas I thought I'd uh, mention while I'm gluing the leg to the ankle. First, make sure you've got the correct leg with the correct ankle. Just line your holes up so the long hole matches the long hole in the ankle when the back of the leg is at the back of the ankle. And then the other one is to make sure the ankle bracelet is somewhere on the leg before you glue it in. I could just see getting this thing glued in that ankle, having it glue set up, look down at the bench, and being the dumbass I am, bracelet is sitting on the bench. So make sure you get that on. Now I'm going to use five minute epoxy to glue this in because the fit is a little bit loose in there and I didn't think uh, CA glue would be as good as uh, a thicker epoxy. So 
So hopefully not too much will ooze out. I tried to put it light on the sides, thicker on the inside of the ankle. You want to put it on both surfaces. There we go. Yeah, I'll just let the epoxy set up for uh, 10 to 15 minutes here and then repeat for the second leg. Finally getting started on the foot power cables or foot hoses, whatever you want to call them. These go between the battery boxes and the foot shells. There's two per foot, so you need four lengths in total. Now you can print these out, but uh, a lot of people are using stainless steel braided hose. The actual uh, movie R2s, they used a copper braided hose and you can get it, but it is super expensive. Whereas stainless steel hose is inexpensive and it's easy to find. I just went to the hardware store and picked up the cheapest on sale hose kit I could find. This is for a dishwasher connection. Uh, it's six feet long and this hose is roughly half an inch in diameter, so about 13 millimeters. So it should fit the little printed knurled knobs okay. Now of course it's not copper colored, so you can paint it copper color, but what I'm going to use is good old rub and buff. This is the autumn gold. Now as far as length goes, you'll find that uh, the documentation varies. I was getting numbers anywhere between 11 and a half and 12 and a half inches. I'm going to go exactly midway, 12 inches, so about 300 millimeters. And I just cut some of this plastic cable loom uh, 12 inches long just to see what it would look like. And I'm quite happy with that uh, length, but you can go whatever cable length you want, right? So we'll get this hose cut to 12 inch lengths. Before you cut stainless steel hose though, you have to wrap it with tape where you're cutting it. Otherwise, the, uh, all the little stainless steel strands will just fray apart. I'm just using a cutoff disc. You could use a Dremel cutoff disc as well. So you'll notice after you get a cut, well, assuming you get the same type of hose, uh, the inside diameter of the hose is too small to fit over the knurled end nipple there. So I'm going to drill it out a little bit. Just to increase the inside diameter there. And there we go. So once we get the tape out, that's probably good enough, but if you're concerned about it fraying and pulling out, you know, pull the hose pulling out of the little knurled knob, I am actually going to fill that little recess in there with CA glue, and then there's no chance of it ever pulling out or the stainless steel braid from fraying. So I'm just going to fill that up all the way around. There we go. Just hit it with some accelerator. Let that fully cure. Now that is never going to come out. And you don't have to worry about the braid spring. Your call if you want to try that or not. Once again, the waxy goodness of Rub and Buff is hard to beat. Man, that looks good. Again, autumn gold, if you want that copper look. Amazing. Many of R2's parts are held on with rare earth magnets and to help aid in orientation and consistency, I will color one pole red with a Sharpie marker and the other pole blue so I can always keep things consistent and the polarities will match for attaching all the different parts.
As you can see, the Omnis are working great. Could not be happier with them. And they're not really that much noisier. They are noisier though than the uh, rollerblade wheels, no doubt about that. But they sure work a whole lot better. <laughs> so he's coming. I've still got lots of painting to do, but I've run out of paint. Let's just take a quick look at uh, what paint we've used so far. Now, just like uh, printer filament, mileage is going to vary on paint, depending on your painting technique, how good of a finish you want, and screw-ups. So, just take this as a guide only, but for my R2, by the time it's all done, I will have gone through approximately seven cans of sandable primer, five cans of semi-gloss white, four cans of sonic blue pearl, two cans of metallic aluminum, and two cans of clear gloss. So yeah, I've still got a whole bag of greebles to paint and obviously there's some details on them that uh, need painting as you can see. And I've got to do all the electronics still. I've just got the uh, two motor controllers loosely fit in there just to see them drive around. But he's really fun to drive around. Goes like a bat out of hell. So it's coming. Front casters work great in the front foot. What do you say, R2? It's fun spinning the body and then working his head so it's rotating at the exact same rate. <laughs> so like I said, just got to get the electronics to do, get the last of the greebles painted up and installed. And I think we can call this project finished maybe in the next video. Thanks for watching folks, and until then, happy R2 building.